Hey guys, welcome to another Happy Japan video. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use the reinforcement um, asset in iClick. Uh, here we have a shield and it's the perfect example for me to show you guys uh, how this can work. So let me just show you here. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a shield. Let's just lock it to our background so it doesn't move. What we're going to do now is that we're going to do a tatami around the the white line of the shield this is like the interior part and I'm gonna show you guys right now how that can work when you're trying to do re reinforcements and how do they work when you're trying to work uh, with uh, multiple layer designs re reinforcements are basically uh, paths of stitch that the machine does so thread doesn't bulk up or get stuck like in translation and parts of like the actual embroidery job so just see there just check if there's any sort of line that's missing you can just align it here Uh, so let's just check and there we have it this is our first sketch now for to activate the reinforce reinforcement mode we need to go to the uh, this section which is the um, kind of configuration and settings you press the enable underlay and it's important that you deactivate everything that's not the enable underlay Press apply and then you, I mean, it's not going to be seen like here, it's not going to be per perceptible, but you're going to notice that when it starts embroidering, you're going to have another type of support when trying to do it. So, still, we're going to put this in 2.30. And what I what I want you guys to see is how it's how different it's gonna be embroidered. So we press Alt R. The first thing we're gonna notice is that first there, it's gonna do a re reinforcement to the back, and then it's gonna actually do the embroidery job. As I said, this is uh, made to guard the design and the actual uh, <coughs> borders of it. So there, if you have a design that has a lot of borders in it, you have a design that there has a, a lot of designs in the same thread piece. This is a very useful tool for you guys to use. <clears throat> so you see if you don't want to lose any sort of details and or um, shrinkage of the thread or your embroidery material, which is very normal when trying to do this. And it's really common amongst uh, beginners. So I'm just going to finish the, the figure for you guys to see how it uh, works. I'm just going to make these sat this uh, running tool. Um, this is very useful for uh, borders. Uh, I actually used this one in the happy face video. You can just watch the folder. Uh, I don't want any sort of
So for um, us guys to see how this is going to work, uh, let's just go into our design here, change the densities. And let's put this in black so it's easier to distinguish. As you can see, there's a little space in here, but that's solvable. You can just make this stitches bigger. You can make your border a bit bigger. Let's go to the X here. You can just apply this 100. Put zero. I wanted to. I, I put a hundred so you guys uh, see how it differentiates when you put zero and then when you put a hundred. When you put zero, uh, the what the system understands is you start your uh, actual border just when the uh, other finishes, and when you put a hundred, it's like you put it on top. So there you have it. I mean, it's just a quick example for you guys to see how the tatami and the uh, this tool, the single pad satin, works. And also, before I go, I just want you guys to see how it's going to be embroidered. Uh, as I said, the, the reinforcement in there is done. Then this stitch is going to be done from up to down, and that's it. So you guys know that you can see the border is done and well this was it guys thank you for watching and then again remember to subscribe to our youtube channel and give us a like on facebook and instagram thank you for watching